Today we're playing the best combo deck in modern. I'm talking about Living End, a deck so good it makes people furious. You'll know what I mean in a sec. How does Living End work? It's actually pretty simple. We play no cards that cost less than 3 mana other than Living End itself. And if you're unfamiliar with Living End, each player exiles all creatures from their graveyard and then sacrifices all creatures and then puts all creatures exiled this way onto the battlefield. So it gets around things like Grafdigger's Cage because you're not entering from the graveyard, you're entering from exile. And we cascade into that spell using Violent Outburst and Charless Agent in order to cast the Living End without having to pay the suspend cost. From there, we play a bunch of pitch interaction in the form of force of negation grief and in this list fury and people have been pretty quick to adapt this card if you watch my last video that you can find in the card above it did not have the main deck furies in it but a couple days later i posted a list with fury in it and that 75 took second place in a modern challenge two fury main deck two in the board and today we're playing a donation deck from pim langen who wanted to see three Furies in the main deck alongside three Waker of Waves. So today we're playing their deck list, and I honestly think it might be pretty good, so I'm excited to play it today. So we have a bunch of free interaction that often puts itself to the graveyard. So Grief and Fury, alongside our sideboard subtleties, put themselves to the graveyard using the Evoke mechanic, and then we bring them back using Living End, so we're filling our graveyard naturally. We also have things that cycle, like Curator of Mysteries, Architects of Will, Street Wraith, and then obviously the Waker Waves that I've mentioned. In the sideboard, we have Endurance and Leyline of the Void for the Mirror. We have Force of Vigor for Chalice of the Void on Zero, which you know, counters the Living End, so that's pretty relevant, as well as opposing copies of Living End. We have additional copies of Ingot Chewer specifically for those Chalice of the Voids, and, you know, subtleties for things like Amulet Titan, etc. That is my deck list, and uh, I hope you enjoy the video today. If you do, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the first match. Don't go anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicsperm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first match. We are on the play. We're facing Monsoon Blue. This hand's very good. We will keep. We're missing a Cascade spell, but this hand has everything else we could want. All right, we're going to lead on Grief, exiling another Grief. We're facing the menace of the format. What is the play here? Is it Undying Malice? I don't, I'm not even sure. Probably not. I don't think I care about Grief. I, I think it's actually the Ragavan. This is going to be a wild game. We'll play the Forest. Let's Grief again. This time we'll take... Do I want to leave them with... Yeah, I think I do. Like, we'll leave them with turn one Grief because it doesn't matter. We will pass. Wild. We know the five cards that I left them with. They have one unknown draw step here. Surprise, surprise, they grab a Blood Crypt. They Grief, Exiling Grief. So they did not draw another black card, or so I believe. And now we'll cycle our Generous Ent, and we'll go grab the Stomping Ground, so that way we have access to red mana. Grief Resolves. Look at my two lands. Just like we drew it up. So now they have a creature in play that will eventually die to a hypothetical living end. They have a land plus one unknown. You draw a Curator of Mysteries. I will put myself to 18 and pass the turn. Ouch. We go to 14. They play the land. So now we don't know either of their cards that are left. It will cycle the Curator of Mysteries. Fury. Draw for turn. Another Fury. So if I play the Fury here, and they have another Undying Malice, their Grief would come back. I think I'm going to take the risk. 
Otherwise, I'm just sitting with two cards in my hand that do nothing. They grab a basic swamp. And our fury will deal three to grief. Or, I'm sorry, four to grief. Okay, they did not have another undying malice, undying effect, period. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, Doc, we have eight Cascade spells. I would like to draw one of them right now. Let's see it. Ottawara. I'm going to hold that. I don't need to use it immediately. We'll be okay. They discard a pair of lands. Ouch, I fall to 12. And they're passing with one card. Pretty please? There we go. All right. I will play the land now. I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll pass the turn. So the fable will transform into reflection of Kiki Jiki, which is a creature. This means that the, my violent outburst is actually going to kill their enchantment. Thought seeds. That's not very nice. Why would you do that? Guess what? It's cascade time. So we're going to reveal cards from the top of our deck until we reveal a living end. Oh, wow. Crazy how that works. And then our opponent concedes. That's usually how it goes. But in the, you know, experience that they don't concede, we will cast this spell for free. And then all creatures in the graveyards come into the battlefield and all creatures that were already on the battlefield get sacrificed. So we would get grief, grief, generous end, curator of mysteries and a fury. They will get Grief, Orcish Bowmasters, and a Ragavan. My Fury triggers dealing four. I can kill all four of their creatures. They would be left with an Orc Army token. Now the tough part, the post board games. So I love Fury in these matchups just because it does kill Dothy Voidwalker. Subtlety is also very good. You can board out for some negation. It's honestly pretty stinky. Some people like Endurance for stopping the... Undying effects, I think that's kind of just a bad play. I'm not trying to offend anyone, I just don't think it's good. We're going to bring in Ingot Chewer for Chalice of the Void. And then we want Force of Vigor for Blood Moon and Leyline of the Void. So many voids. But we're at 66 cards, something's gotta give. In general, I don't think that Waker of Waves is super good in this matchup. Because we're not really arguing over combat math. That's the kind of card that Waker rewards, is you're like, okay... Both of our boards are going to get clogged into this stalemate and Waker breaks the stalemate. That's not what's going to happen here. So we can board those out. We also don't need Grief. That's another card you can side out here. So that brings us to 59. If you want to, you could also board out the Architects and then keep your Wakers. Um, it really depends on how you want to approach the matchup. Some people really like Grief because it stops Dothy from coming down on turn two. There's a lot of different ways you can play the matchup. Personally, I'm not a super huge fan of Grief. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shave on Architects and bring back in the Wakers. Just because they fuel your graveyard faster, which I don't know. It's fine. Um, it's just I don't think the combat math really matters. It's just like if you clear a Dothy, you get more stuff to your graveyard quickly. And this hand is great. We're going to keep this. What I love about these sort of hands is if our opponent opens up on grief, undying grief, they're discarding creatures. That's actually great for us. Leyline of the Void. Okay. Them discarding our cards now with grief, less great. They play a turn one black cleave cliffs, and there's grief exiling terminate. They have two cards left. They took our ingot chewer. They have the Undying Malice. If your last card is Chalice of the Void, that is the best possible start you could have. All right, Grief comes back. If I were them, I would take the Generous End. And they took a Curator of Mysteries. Wow, the best possible start they could have. Let's see if we can come back and win this. Force of Vigor, let's see it. Another Generous End, okay. I mean, it doesn't get better than this. Like, this is your ideal start. Ouch. We'll take four, falling to 16 life. They have one land. They did not draw a one mana spell. So we're going to go search out our basic island. And then I'll cycle a generous scent for the basic forest. We have three copies of Force of Vigor. That doesn't really help me all that much. We'll play it. And then pass the turn. We will fall to 11 life. And then we'll fetch down to 10. Grab... Steam vents. 
And then I'm going to cycle the Curator. We're not trying to hard cast here. We're trying to draw into Force of Vigor. So now we have a Cascade spell. We just have to find Force of Vigor. There we go. I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to beat their best possible start. Nothing, nothing is guaranteed here. But we have a fighting chance. So this is going to send us the six life. They have three cards. They have land number two. And they play it tapped. All right, well, we drew the Force of Vigor. We'll blow up both of their, you know, permanents, Leyline of the Void and Chalice of the Void. And now we'll put some creatures into the graveyard. So Oliphant, we'll grab Stomping Around, and we'll cycle Oliphant again. Steam Vents, we're at six life. I could go to four and put Curator into the graveyard. So let's do some quick math. If I go to four and do that play, two Oliphants is 16 damage. Curator would actually be 20. Uh, plus Shardless Agent, so I guess 22. So is it more reasonable to die from four life than it is six? Double Lightning Bolt does it. And I'm not sure if it actually changes much else. So I'm going to cycle the Curator. Subtlety. I will go to four. Shardless Agent. Get a little closer to the mic. I have a habit of backing away. All right. Casting the living end for free. They bolt me to one. Okay. You need one point of damage. They have two cards. And we win the match. The best possible start out of Rakdos Scam. The best deck in Modern. We beat it. We are 1-0. Let's head on over to match number two. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Here we go on the play for the second match. Yeah, this hand is terrific. We will keep. Turn one Misty Rainforest will fetch. Let's grab Steam Vents. I'm usually not a super big fan of cycling in my main phase, but here we have the Grief. If I could draw a black card that I don't care about, we could be rewarded. Instead, I draw essentially our second land drop. I'm into that. Verdant Catacombs. Okay. It's also a red card that pitches to the Fury. I'm going to force this. I would like my Violent Outburst. Ooh, they had grief anyway. You got me. Fine. Pitching Agadim's Awakening. They took the Violent Outburst. We've drawn it's a street rate, so I could grief them right here. And I think that's the game plan, because I don't want to have to deal with the Dothy Voidwalker. Okay, turn two grief. Fury, Bowmasters. Sure, we'll take the Bowmasters. In hindsight, I think I would have rather have cycled the Street Wraith, but I didn't know what their hand was. Cycle the Oliphant. We'll grab Stomping Ground, Player Land. So we are at least two draw steps away from winning this game. I need land number three and to draw one of our remaining Cascade spells. We have seven of those left in our deck. So they showed us the card they drew for turn. Uh, I must have crossed off the wrong card. No, okay, sorry, that's their graveyard. So, we know about Fury Terminate, and we don't know about one other card. We draw a Curator of Mysteries for the turn. We'll cycle that, looking for our third land. I drew the worst possible draw on the deck. No big deal. Fury Pitching Lightning Bolt. So this tells us that our opponent drew an Undying Effect, and it's pretty scary because this puts us on a real clock. The upside here is that I have my own Fury. Oh, that's weird. No Undying Effect. Uh, sure. And I draw the third land. Beautiful. So now we're just looking to draw into one of our seven remaining Cascade spells. And here I'm going to grab the Basic Forest when I could have grabbed a Breeding Pool. A lot of these Rakdos decks play zero to two copies of Main Deck Blood Moon. So having some insurance... And giving us a possible violent outburst out is always good. They have Dothy Voidwalker. Okay. 
Force of Negation doesn't help me here. Slightly punished for the decision to not get Breeding Pool. They have land number three. So they have Fury and one, un I'm sorry, Terminate and one unknown in hand. We fall the 14 life. There we go. Okay. We'll pass the turn here. They fetch. And I'm going to take the attack. I don't see there being a huge difference between be being at 14 or 11. And this way, if they tap out in their second main phase, I can get them. They don't tap out. So let's do some quick math. So if I Violent Outburst here, we have a Curator of Mysteries, which could die to a Fury. We have a Grief. They have a Grief. They have an Orcish Bowmasters. And I get back Oliphant, Generous Ente, and Curator of Mysteries. But they have a Terminate. So they probably terminate the Generous Ent. So I'd have Curator, Oliphant, and Grief versus their Fury. I think I'm actually going to wait. Because if I draw another red spell, we're in business. Draw for turn. Ding. Okay, we will pitch the Oliphant. So we will kill the Dothy Voidwalker. Also, huge fan of main deck grief. So good. And now the Fury goes to the graveyard. And I'm just going to pass. I don't need to main phase my Violent Outburst. That is not necessary. They play land number four. On their end step, we will finally cast our Violent Outburst. Cascade Trigger happens. Living End. All right, I think we're actually going to get to do it. Triggers. So my triggers will go on the stack first, I believe. No, they're active player. Okay, my bad. I misspoke. They're active player. So theirs go on the stack first and then mine go on top of it. So the way that it works is my triggers will resolve first. Theirs will resolve last. So they have three cards. I think it's not unreasonable for them to have a bunch of undying effects here. So I think I'll click on my Jenner Scent trigger first. And then Fury can kill Bowmasters. No. Dothy and Grief. I don't want to kill their Fury because if they have an undying effect, they could get it back. And I don't want that to happen. Look at that stack. That's just good, clean living. We see a Terminate on the Oliphant. Sure thing. So we don't know the last two cards in their hand. Looks like a Lightning Bolt. We go to 8. Now they're fetching to 17. Grief happens. They have another Fury. Now my Fury happens. Generous Scent will create a food token. Their Grief will resolve. They can discard one of these cards that just doesn't matter. I get two Curator Triggers. We don't need an Ottawara, that can go on the bottom. Don't need a Grief, that can go on the bottom. Bowmaster triggers. Fury triggers. Okay. Think we came out ahead? <laughs> Not really sure. Alright, so we're at 8. I can swing 8 in the air. They attack, I can block with my Generous Ent and gain some life. I think that works. Swing, swing. I think they actually messed up. I think they killed the wrong creature. They should have killed the Generous Scent. They draw Ragavan, and they chose not to dash it, which was a little bit odd. I think I would have dashed there. They're just going to play defense. Interesting. So if you're not going to attack, that makes sense. We go up to 11. Another Violent Outburst. So here you're allowed to only attack with one, because you'll have lethal on the next turn. So you get to play defense while threatening lethal. This is just a safer attack than swinging with both. And if they manage to kill your creatures, you can just Violent Outburst again. Oh, I'm a dummy. I was so concerned with not uh, over-attacking. I completely forgot about the plus one, plus zero on Violent Outburst. If I would have thought for 30 more seconds, uh, we would have won that turn. All right, so we'll go to blocks. Block here. Block there. Bane Death. Sure. They targeted my creature. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sure. We've taken game number one against Rakdos Scam, the menace of the format. We want these Force of Vigors. We want the Ingot Chewers. We want Fury. We're also interested in Subtlety. And once again, we're going to board out Griefs and Force of Negation. 62 will shave a couple copies of 
Architects of Will. Let's try it again. Game number two on the draw. Our opponent has kept seven. This hand's a little bit risky, but I'm going to keep it. No Ley Line. That's a good start. Thought sees. They'll see that we have two Cascade spells. This hand is effectively a five lander, so it's not amazing. But it is discard proof, resilient. I don't know the words. Uh, that was a weird take because, I mean, I was going to put that to the grave. Like, I don't need the land off it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say here. Drawing a land was not ideal. That's for sure. Okay. Dothy, we'll just go grab our basic. Once again, don't want to lose to Blood Moon. Draw for turn. Living end. Two duds in a row. Pass the turn. They have four cards. They play a Blood Crypt, untapped, going to 16 life. We'll take three going to 16 life, so it's a tie ball game. And they're just passing. Fury. Interesting. I'm going to hang on to that Fury. I'm going to pass her now. Bow Masters. Ouch. I'm at 15. Now they're attacking for five. I go to 10. They have four cards in their hand. Okay. We'll draw Architects. So let's start off with the Fury, I guess. Violent Outburst, it will be pitched. The Evoke Trigger. Let's see if they would like to respond at all here. Ooh, they feign death on the Dothy. So my Fury is going to get exiled. While this is in the graveyard, because it's about to come back, I can cycle the Architects. Because this way I get another creature in the graveyard. They're going to flash in a Bowmaster. They know that I have a Charless Agent, so this is a little bit of a weird play. I draw a card. It's another Charless Agent. So now the Dothy comes back. I think this actually worked out very well for me. And now we're going to go to 6 life and they have 2 cards in hand. We will now Charless Agent. Cascade. Cast a living end. They'll sacrifice their creatures, and then they'll gain an Orcish Bowmasters. So we go to five life. Oh, in the previous game, I said what's the difference between being at three, at being at four, and being at six? The difference is I was dead to Bowmasters and Lightning Bolt. I could have played around that, I guess. Um, I mean, these are really good cards. I think we want to put Fury on the bottom. We'll put Bowmasters and then Feign Death on top. Three mana for a Fable. So that means that next turn they're drawing their Fury with a Feign Death. Interesting. So they're drawing Bowmasters, Fury, and then a new card next turn. Another Violent Outburst. Ooh. Let's just sacrifice the food now. Swing, swing. Getting in for eight. No block, so they're going to take it. And we'll pass. Orcish Bowmasters and Leyline of the Void. So they have Fury, Feign Death, and One Unknown. I'll block the zombie token. That is going to become... No, they discarded the Bowmasters. I still think I want to block the zombie. Alright, so they had another Bowmasters. But this is the best block anyway, because if I have to Living End again, they're not getting back more stuff. So they don't have Feign Death, Fury here. I'm at 6 life, and I think I'm going to go down to 5. Grab a Steam Vents. They're at 8. They have to block. Ooh. So I know that they have a Feign Death, actually. That's a little annoying here. But it'll be tapped, right? I think that's how it works. I should just read it. Tapped, yeah. Reading the card often explains the card. Cast Fury. Oh, but the zombie token won't be. Okay, so now the Bowmasters comes back. It's now a 2-2, and then they get a Orc Army token, and I'm at 4. We know that they have a Fury in hand. I don't think that they can kill me. Like, even if they drew a red card here, they kill my Fury, put me to 2. I'm going to swing out. So they'll block the Generous Ent and take 3 down to 5. They draw a Lightning Bolt, I'm not dead. I don't think there's a draw that gets them out of this. The Fable becomes a reflection of Kiki Jiki, which is fine. I don't care about that. They drew a land, so now they can't even play the Fury. And they have to block here or else they're dead. 
So we just swing out. Swing, swing. So I could Violent Outburst to pump the Architects, but that doesn't really make sense here. Because there's no difference between them being at 2 and them being at 1. So first strike damage happens, and then regular damage happens. They're at 2. We're at 4. We have defeated the best deck in the format twice. I told you Living End was good in the intro. People choose not to believe me. This is the best combo deck in Modern. Let's go see the next three rounds. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. We are running hot on die rolls. I, once again, match number three on the play. We have Turbo and Grief and essentially a five lander that said those lands put themselves to the graveyard because they're creatures. We just have to draw a cascade spell. I think that this hand is good enough. All right. Grief, exiling Grief to the evoke ability. Let's slide this back over here. <laughs> scam again okay let's take the grief i mean their hand doesn't really do anything if we take the grief play the basic and we'll pass the turn third match in a row being rakdos you gotta love modern and i'm told that this is healthy they play turn one blood crypt we will cycle the generous ent and go grab a basic forest all right cascade spell let's see it Draw for turn, it's an Architects. Play the Forest, we'll pass. So I think what we're going to do is on their end step, we'll cycle the Oliphant and go grab a Steam Vents. And then we'll cycle the Architects because exiling or removing the land from the deck is better than potentially drawing a Steam Vents. Fury exiling Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, so they're putting us on a clock here. Yeah. Fury was a pretty good draw for them. Very fast clock. We'll now cycle the Oliphant. I guess we're not in the end step. I should wait until the cycle until we're in the end step. All right, and now we'll cycle the Architects. Boom! Love it. Another land. Okay. We'll play the Steam Vents. Pass the turn. I mean, I could Violent Outburst on their turn. And then the way that it works is it's a sacrifice effect. So Fury goes from the battlefield to the graveyard. They could Undying Malice again. They play the Mount Doom. I could take eight here or I could Violent Outburst at this very moment. I think I'm going to Violent Outburst now. Because they're going to Undying Malice and they're going to tie up some of their mana anyway. Cast Living End. There's the Fiend Death. Oh, so they still have an Undying Malice. They... Am I wrong here? I might have switched what I crossed off. I might have sw crossed off the wrong one. We'll target them. Then the Generous End Trigger, and then Grief. So this way we know how we want to stack their deck based on what their hand is. They have Fatal Push. Killing my Grief. I mean, we might have lost this exchange. Their last card was a Thoughtseize. We're going to put this Fury, I guess Terminate would actually be, hmm, Fury's probably the one we want to put on the bottom, I guess. So now they can kill my Oliphant with the Fury trigger. Yeah, I mean, this wasn't great for us. Now they discard my Oliphant. Okay, Force of Negation. So that will stop the Terminate. And I think we just swing out here, turn this into a race. Swing, swing. They do not block. So they're going to take 8 to 12, and we're just going to pass. So now they can attack for 11. Ouch. I'm at 7. I can gain 10. But we need to draw something good here. Here we go. Land was not it. So we know that they're about to draw a Terminate. Play the Breeding Pool. 
So I think I'm going to leave back the Generous Ent and attack with the Architects. It gives me more time to draw into a Cascade spell, which is really what I'm looking to do here. We will show them our Force of Negation. Blue, blue, green. We're going to block the Fury. These will trade, and then I'll take three down to seven. Our own Fury. This card has overperformed this league. Waker Waves I've been indifferent about, but... Fury, three main deck has just been so good. Get out of here, Grief. And our opponent's about to draw a Fury that they can't cast. So I believe that's going to wrap up this game. Our opponent just said in chat that main deck Fury is a weird one. No, it's just great. <laughs> I mean, I think it's proved it so far this league. We'll bring in our subtleties. Fury. Whoa, I do not need Endurance. And get your Force of Vigors. Once again, Force of Negation can get out of here. Don't need those. And goodbye to our own copies of Grief. And then Architects. I mean, you could argue that, like, maybe you want Endurance. I mean, Endurance is a creature that you can easily cast. It messes with their graveyard tricks. I mean, I don't hate it. So the question is, is Endurance better than Architects of Will when you're boarding in Creator of Mysteries? I'm sorry, when you're boarding in Subtleties. I'm, I'm not convinced. You could also say, hey, I don't want Street Wraith in an aggressive matchup. And I think that's actually pretty reasonable. You know what? I'm going to try something different this time. I mean, I board differently all the time. So, um, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. In my head, that's where Street Wraith was, and then it shifted. So we'll try this out. I feel like if you board the same way all the time, you never really learn. Also, this hand is amazing. Keep. <laughs> yeah, this is very good. Keep, 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 keep. Boo! Turn one swamp. And they're going to pass. Interesting. Waker of Waves will play our land and pass the turn. No land too, huh? Okay. So we will fetch... I think I'm going to grab the basic island here. And then we'll cycle an Oliphant to go grab Stomping Ground. That was a good one. We'll play the Stomping Ground. Untapped. Pass the turn. Not sure what my play is going to be here. Grief Pitching Shield Red. I think I'm going to roll the dice on Exiling Violent Outburst. And then we can Subtlety the Grief. Removing subtlety. And then we'll put grief on the top or bottom of their deck, whatever they choose. They have five cards left. They evoke a fury. Sure, that's fine. And now they're passing the turn. I think I'm actually going to cycle again. We'll grab a steam vents. And then cycle the architects. To sage you. Okay. Uh, endurance was actually kind of great here. We'll play the Besaju, pass the turn. They have three cards remaining in their hand. Another Fury, wow. They are not going to be happy. I mean, if they don't use an Undying effect here. Wow, opponent is about to be very upset. You boarded in an Endurance in the Mirror and it was amazing? How dare you? I mean, I'm just making up a narrative about our opponent. I'm sure they're a terrific person. Bear with me here. And they concede. 3060. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Rakdos Scam is the top deck on MTG Goldfish. We're making it look embarrassingly good for us. All right, two more matches left to go. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Four die rolls in a row? I'll take it. Oh, we're not facing Rakdos Scam. Our opponent has a companion. They reveal Gigantha. This hand is really good. We'll keep. I am into the winning, and that's what this hand does. So, let's go. Turn one, Besaju, who endures. We will pass. Tron. Okay. Do I want to counter a map? I think I do. Okay, I mean, I don't know how good this actually is against Tron. I mean... I, I like to hype up my hands, but we might not beat Tron with this. Just a fair warning. We draw land three. We'll play Steam Vents. Pass the turn. 
Chromatic Star. I'm good with that. Where's this tower? They had a green. Ancient Stirrings. Yep. They find Urza's power plant, which means that they have Tron next turn. Okay. It's not good for us. We'll cycle the Oliphant. Go grab another Steam Vents. And then let's cycle Architects. We draw another land. Yikes. Okay. And another land. Play the forest because it doesn't deal as damage. I could cast Violent Outburst right now and you know, rearrange the top of their deck. I don't want to do that, though. Not because I don't think it's a good play, but because I might be able to mess with whatever they're doing here. So we'll cross off the power plant. Like, if they try to play Karn the Great Creator into Tormod script, we can, you know, do something about that. Speaking of which, there's a Karn the Great Creator. They use Karn. They grab Chalice of the Void. All right, well, now we have to take action. A violent Outburst. We'll cast a Living End. And I'm actually going to target myself here. Because if I can draw another Violent Outburst, we have Lethal. Ding! There we go. Okay. So, right now... Oblivion Stone. Doesn't matter, you're dead. Um, so this would be... 19 damage, they're obviously at 20. Show them the Violent Outburst, maybe they won't make me attack. No, I don't want to cast it. My creatures get larger, and now we go to combat. All at you. Oliphant's trigger will make our Architects of Will huge. Have you ever seen an Architect that large? Probably not. I mean, it's an 8-3, that's a pretty decent sized creature. Sweet. Now we're going to the next one. What to do against them? Well, I do like Force of Vigor. I think Ingot Chewer is pretty good. Subtlety's weird. It's good against their Planeswalkers. I mean, it's good against like Worm Coil and stuff too, I suppose. Fury is one that I'm not as convinced about. Like, yeah, you can kill a Karn the Great Creator, but I think you'd rather just now let it resolve. So we can get rid of those. That's 66 cards. I'm going to board out Waker of Waves. I'm sorry, Pem. But I, I don't think it's what we want here. And then we still need to find three cards to take out. Maybe one Living End. I'm going to try two Oliphant. It could bite me in the butt because we're on the draw and I'm essentially boarding down on lands. Because these cards are a part of our mana base. Okay, well, I mean, if we had a single land, this hand is very good. But I don't know if I'm supposed to keep it. So we would have a draw step plus a street rate cycle. And then if we hit on one of those two, this hand just goes straight to the moon. They kept seven. I'm going to mulligan. This hand, like... So you have force for relic or something like that. But the problem is that if you keep this, it's essentially a mulligan to five already. So is your five-card hand better? I'm going to go to five. This is actually decent. So we'll keep this. Get rid of one grief. And the Oliphant? I'm not as convinced about that one. Turn one power plant. Chromatic star, sure. Draw for turn. It's a land. Let's cycle the Street Wraith. Let's see what we can find here. All right, we will exile an Architects. Triggers. The Stone Brain. Well, we'll get rid of that. Play a Misty, pass the turn. So they kept a hand without Tron because they really valued the Stone Brain that highly. They create a green, they draw a card. That's a Chromatic Star. They have Karn, two, a pair of Karn the Great Creator and two Unknowns. Okay, deck. I am looking to find a Cascade spell. Can you help me out? Ouch. Cycle the Architects. And my decision to keep Force of uh, Vigor over the Oliphant here could bite me in the butt, but we drew land three so this actually ended up being a sort of free play let's cycle this now so i know if i have to take damage off this breeding pool or not cycle i'm going to hold the generous scent one it's force of vigor fodder but also like pulling land four out of my deck doesn't really help me right now on our end step they cycle the chromatic star so they have four unknown cards now relic 
That's a bummer. So our best draw just became Violent Outburst because we could destroy the Relic and then in response to them sacrificing it, we could Living End. Come on, let's see it. Violent Outburst. Draw for turn. Ottawara. Not quite. So we'll play the Breeding Pool. We'll pass the turn. They missed their land drop, which is kind of surprising, though. Uh, Tron plays a lot of lands. The Ancient Stirrings. They find mine, so they're one land away now. Chromatic Sphere. And we draw it. Violent Outburst. There we go. All right, so we're passing. They didn't use it. Perfect. In their upkeep, we will Force of Vigor, removing the Generous Scent, just like we drew it up. So they've cycled the Chromatic Sphere. They're now going to tap the Relic. We will exile Misty Rainforest. And in response to this Relic activation, we will cast Violent Outburst. And now we will cast Living End. Now we'll grief and then we'll architects again. And our opponent concedes. 4080. We're about to play for a trophy. I hope we get it. I'll see you in the fifth match. The Command Tower software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting your own magic events with features such as easy to create event registration for four player and one on one Swiss based games. Event management has never been so simple and it's done on the web. No downloads are required. You can sign up for $5 by visiting eminence.events slash subscribe. For the trophy, match number five, we've lost our first die roll. I don't like that. We're, so we're on the draw. Our opponent's taking a mulligan. Here we've opened up double living end, which is essentially already a mulligan. That said, we do have double cascade spell. I think this hand is kind of a trap. I'm personally going to go to six. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm a little bit punished here for taking that mulligan. We're going to go to five. This seems like a reasonable keep. We'll put Living End on the bottom, and the Besage you. Let's party. Our opponent kept six cards. Uh-oh, are we playing the Mirror Match? No, we are not. Uh, but that scares me because if they have Teferi here, I can't counterspell it. Due to Delighted Halfling's ability that says Legendary Spells can't be countered. We draw Ottawara. We'll start off by cycling Street Raid, see if I can hit a Grief. Boom. Exile the Architects. What you got? A pair of Gilded Goose. So they're actually just on Yawgmoth combo. My good friend Brandon Osborne just won the Gathering event in, I believe, North Carolina over the weekend playing Yawgmoth combo. We'll play out the Misty past the turn. They have an Urza's Saga. Uh, it's probably not Yawgmoth. I mean... I didn't realize this, but their land drop was a breeding pool, which is what made me think of Teferi, so I don't know what's wrong with me. Saga, Goose. So they have Yavamaya and one unknown. You going to attack with your delighted halfling? I mean, you it's three life that you could gain or one damage. I, th I think both are fine. You're probably not going to sacrifice the food token because you want it for your constructs. They choose to not attack. We'll grab the basic forest and then cycle Oliphant for steam vents. Looking for one of our eight cascade spells. There we go. So we'll play steam vents tapped and then we'll pass the turn. So they're likely going to make a construct this turn. And I think the instant speed violent outburst is going to play out very well for us. Now they're attacking. Okay. Still not exactly sure what they're playing, but who knows? A blue card for this Force of Negation would also be very welcome. Like, I don't know what their blue mana's for, but if I could protect this Fallen Outburst, I would be a big fan of that. I go to 16. Okay, so no play from them. We draw an island. I'm going to hold the Atawara because we might be able to use that later. On our end step, the opponent creates a Construct token. And I think now what we're going to see is our opponent is going to activate the Saga to create a Construct. They do not. Interesting. Due to fear of graveyard hate, I'm going to outburst now. Like if they have a main deck, like Relic of Progenitus or something, I don't want to lose to that. Living End? It resolves. Okay. 
If I had to guess, the most likely thing that they're getting with this Urza Saga trigger is probably Underworld Cookbook, but who knows? Collected Company. We will take that. All right, let's see what they get with the Saga. My guess, Underworld Cookbook. I could be wrong. Springleaf Drum. They play a land. I'm really hoping that they don't Court of Calling on their own turn. Oh, they're going to. That's a bummer. Court of Calling for two. Samwise. Okay, so they are just a food deck. We'll take two. We go to 14. They're at 18, so let's just do some quick math. I have 12, 14 points of damage here. That is not enough to win the game. We will attack. Our Oliphant will trigger. We'll make our grief just a little bit bigger. Should I main phase bounce this Samwise? I think no, because if they draw a collected company, I want to be able to counter that. I think Collected Company is one of the few cards that could get them out of this situation. And our opponent concedes. We are one game away from greatness. The perfect 5 0 We likely want the Fury here. I think we're also interested in subtleties. Probably. They're a food deck. I don't know if they have ley lines. That's 68 cards. Waker of Waves can definitely get boarded out. That leaves us at 65. Board out one living end and then try to board out grief. Is that crazy? And if we're boarding out grief, theoretically, they are a, a graveyard deck. I mean, they're a Samwise deck. I could board an endurance. I don't hate that either. So we can board out some number of street wraiths and then maybe board in one waker or the fourth living end. But also just do a couple copies of ingot chewer. I'll do one ingot chewer. Let's try this. Like, I'm just not familiar with our opponent's deck, so I'm not confident in some of these decisions. Also, this hand is incredible. We're definitely keeping this. It's lacking a blue card for the subtlety. That's about the only complaint that I have. Windswept Heath. Overgrown Tomb. Into Delighted Halfling. You got it. We draw another Violent Outburst. We'll pass the turn. We have a Temple Garden. Another Halfling. Okay. Gilded Goose. I'll take one. They have three cards remaining in their hand. I would love to draw a blue card here. On their end step, we're going to fetch and grab Breeding Pool. Ouch. Cycle the Elephant. And we'll grab Steam Vents. Now we'll draw for turn. And when I missed on the blue spell. Okay. A little disappointed by that. I'll go to 14 and play the Steam Vents untapped. This gives me the option of using Besaju if I need to. When it plays Chalice of the Void. Okay. I mean, that's fine at this point in the game. They have two cards in their graveyard, or two cards in their hand. I'm really good at misspeaking. They're fetching with the Verdant. Chatterfang. They have one card left in hand. Okay. They attack for two. We will fall to 12. On their end step, we will use the Besaju, and we'll blow up the Chalice of the Void. So one thing that I like about our current position is if our opponent has an Endurance as their last card, they cannot cast it. They have a single card in hand, which means that they cannot pitch cast Endurance. They also, I'm giving them a land off the Besaju, but they have that land in Gilded Goose, which is only two mana. They grab a Gingerbread Cabin. Okay. We draw a living end. Not ideal. So we're going to go to 10 life here. And I think I want at least two cards off of this living end. So I'm going to pitch cast my endurance right now. So the way that this will work is assuming that everything goes according to plan. And we don't know what our opponent's last card in hand is. It could be anything. But assuming that everything goes according to plan, we're going to empty their graveyard with this endurance. Endurance goes to the graveyard. And we will now Violent Outburst. And assuming that everything, once again, goes according to plan, we will cast Living End. And our opponent's graveyard is empty. And so they will put nothing into play. And then they'll sacrifice all the things that are currently in play. Endurance will come back, and then it will put all of their creatures on the bottom of their deck. Ooh, it can sacrifice itself. I didn't realize that. Okay. Touche. And now we're passing the turn. I'm at 10, and their Cheddar Fang has Forest Walk. That's another thing that we need to consider here. 
They can gain 6 life, so they're at effective 20. It's going to be a close one. Our opponent has drawn a card. They've moved past combat. And now they're in their second main phase. I'm not really sure what's going on here. They've paused for a while as well. They're now below 14 minutes on clock, so they're def definitely being deliberate. I'm not sure what's going on. They might just be flexing a little bit. I'm not sure. But I think it's also a little bit odd that they didn't attack with the Chatterfang when it has Forest Walk and I have a Breeding Pool in play. We draw into a Curator Mystery, so we're able to flash in the, or evoke in the Subtlety now, if that's what we want to do. We'll attack, the Elephant will trigger, turning our Endurance into a 5-4. So we're attacking now for 11. The opponent says, I don't need to block. Okay, we're going to pass. This looks like a Court of Calling. For three. So this gets Samwise. Alright, so there's got to be some sort of combo here that I don't understand. So they're going to sacrifice squirrels. Whenever one or more tokens would be put, would be created under your control, those tokens put that many 1-1 one, one green squirrels instead. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield, create a food, sacrifice three I'm just like I could violent outburst here, but I'm not sure if they have the win. So they would have to play a non token creature. So let's say they cast a creature from their hand. I can always wait and then living end in response to a creature as well. I think that's the move. But I guess they're tapped out here. I, I've already passed, so it's too late. So this will create a food token. When that happens, they put that many 1-1 one, one green squirrels into play instead. So they create a food. Well, they were going to make a food, and then instead they made a squirrel. They play beside you. They have no hand now. Oh, I could have subtletied that. What am I thinking? I'm like so busy trying to figure out their combo that I forgot about subtletying their creature. Did I just throw? I might have just thrown. Jeez Louise, what am I doing? We'll cycle the Curator. I, I can't believe I didn't subtlety that. Maybe I don't want the perfect 5-0. With plays that terrible, who knows? We draw another Curator. We'll cycle that. Into an Oliphant. I believe I ported out a Living End. So there's one Living End left in our deck. Our Cyborg confirms that. We'll cycle the Oliphant. We'll grab a Steam Vents, I guess. Generous Ent. We'll go straight to combat. Hiya. So the Endurance will become a 5-4 once again. They can gain 10 life here. I'm sorry, they can go up to 9 life by sacrificing the food. So now they go to 6. And then they can sacrifice the food and go to 9. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, we need to sign blocking orders. That's fine. Both of these are okay. So right now we're trampling over for 1. I'm trampling over for one. Okay. I believe that's fine. Hopefully I didn't mess this up. Yeah, because the, the outburst only would have been two more damage, and there's no difference when they have a food open. All right, I am at eight life, and I will try to not throw this game any further. They go up to seven life. So now it's their no hand versus my subtlety plus whatever. We will subtlety that. Okay, they're going to make a food right now, which the subtlety in the food generation just balances out each, like, they, they wash. It does take up my opponent's entire turn, but it doesn't actually do a whole lot for me. And they put the uh, artifact creature back on top of their deck as well. So we'll attack. They're at four life. I'm thinking right now about if I want to end step... Violent Outburst. I believe it's lethal. Cycle the Generous Scent. I'm just so nervous about misplaying this somehow. Grab the basic. Should I? I'm, I'm just so nervous here. So, return target historic card from the graveyard, which is this card, because this is going to get sacrificed. Um, Yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to living end here. We're just going to take our turn. Maybe I wasn't supposed to cycle the Generous End if I wasn't going to Living End. What a draw. Wow. 
You go to combat and see what happens. They block. Interesting. A little surprised by that. Now they're going to create a food token, so it's going to make a bunch. They're at four. We will hard cast Fury. Kill whatever this thing is called. They have no hand. They have one draw step. They have a clue token. And they have two foods. They draw a card using the clue. Is this it? They play a land. So they can gain six life here, going up to ten. I can Violent Outburst to deal lethal. And I can hard cast Force and Negation if they have collected company. I believe that's it. Swing, swing. Before... I guess we can go to blocks. Oh, they're tapping mana. Endurance. So that will eat my subtlety alive. Okay. I mean, that was a very good draw for them. So we're going to Violent Outburst so that way my subtlety trades. No, they're just dead? Oh, actually, I think our opponent's just dead here. I think they're dead. No, I do not want to cast it. Oh, I'm an idiot. I was supposed to make them go to blocks. I'm an idiot. Ah, oh, I got too jumpy. In my head, I was like, yeah, they're going to block the subtlety. They just blocked the Fury here. Luckily, it has double strike, but this could cost me. That was a stupid move. That was really bad. Maybe I don't want to win. I mean, have you seen the way I'm playing? I'm sure you have. I mean, you're still watching for some reason, but geez, this has been uh, not a very good final round. It is getting pretty late, but that's not an excuse. They're at three life. Effectively six with the food token. And a concession. All right, we did it. 5 10 My play at the end was not very good. I'm, I'll be the first one to admit that. But hey, we got the perfect 5-0 trophy. I said that this was the best. Be I'm so excited. I said that this was the best combo deck in modern, and I meant it. Uh, Living End is just by far the best combo deck. It's not even close. And I love Storm decks. It's just that it's hard to argue when you have Force of Negation, Fury, Grief, Endurance, Subtlety. Like all of these broken Modern Horizons cards really push this deck over the edge. And it has a ton of natural synergy. We beat the best deck in the format three times. Does that mean that this is the best deck? Who knows? Probably not. But I do think it's a terrific choice in the modern metagame and uh why not let's celebrate the 5-0 by opening up all of the chests see if we get anything good in here uh we opened up an auto aura i don't think those are worth anything though vexing shusher i played that card when i was a kid yeah this looks like a pretty terrible 11 chest but uh sweet thank you to everyone for watching i really do appreciate it thank you to pim pim paid for me to play my favorite modern deck i mean I absolutely love that. I don't know how good the Waker of Waves actually were. I boarded them out a lot because I just don't think in the matchups we played, you want them. They're really good in the mirror match. That's where they shine, in my opinion. But in general, uh, I'll show you my, my actual 75. So this is what I was playing before Pim asked me to play. After seeing today's video, I think I want to move a Fury into the main deck, probably over the Striped Riverwinder. And I'm not sure what else I would do with the cyborg. So that obviously creates a cyborg slot. The ingot chewers, mm, I'm, I'm not convinced, but the overall shell of the deck I thought was amazing. And that's really what mattered today. So once again, thank you for watching. Have a great day. And as always, keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. There's no better way to support our channel. If you're interested in elevating your combo game, visit theepicstorm.com slash tutoring for details about our coaching sessions. Don't worry, there's more great combo content coming right up.